All right, fellas, what we got here is some homemade high temperature refractory glue. And this stuff can withstand some serious temperatures. You can see here it's stronger than the refractory material that I've glued together. And this is what it looks like, kind of like peanut butter. It stays like this in the jar. It doesn't dry up. And it's made out of water glass and garden lime. And I want to show you guys some of the powerful heat shield properties this stuff has that can outperform fire brick itself. This here's a piece of fire brick, and we're about to see a big deep hole get burnt inside of this stuff. So one of the most amazing things about it is, is how well it can stick to metal and how well it can protect metal from extreme heat exposure. This here is a homemade refractory material that I've come up with. It's not the most robust in the world, but um, it seems to be some pretty stout stuff. It seems to be very resistant to heat, and it might make a good coating compound to glaze over the furnace walls of a foundry you already have because it has a very high heat resistance, and it sticks to metal like crazy. It also sticks to glass very well. I used this as a level indicator on this test device, and it did very well. This entire test device was set in this compound. This is what it looked like before I set it. Here's another example of that. And this is made out of a high fraction of water glass and yard and garden lime. The melting point of that stuff's like 4,000 Fahrenheit. Well, I had some of it laying around and I decided to mix it with some water glue or some water glass. And it made a high temperature type adhesive. It's kind of, kind of like JB Weld. I can't bust that. This piece here got heated up a little bit with a torch. But uh, yeah, some pretty hard stuff. Here's a big clump of it that hasn't been fired yet, and I'm gonna kind of drop it on the ground here. It's not wanting to bust in half. So it certainly does not want to bust in half. Just about as strong as concrete, but here's a fire brick just for comparison. <laughs> so it outdoes fire brick by far, you guys. It's way denser, heavier, and I don't know if it can handle it any better, but we're gonna hit a piece of this with a torch also. We're gonna be using 15 amps on a 240 volt system. There's a monster electrolyzer on this thing, like an industrial size electrolyzer. So we're gonna have plenty of oxyhydrogen gas to blast these materials with. But I also wanted to share some information about these cores. If you ever go to make them, you might learn the hard way some things that I did about them. They can be cured with carbon dioxide, but if you reheat them after they've been set in air, they melt on you again. We're going to go right about 15 amps on this flame here. That's about 2,000 watts of power. Well, hold on. It moved on us. 2.8 kilowatts. Over five liters per minute, jumping around quite a bit because the bubbles are so big. First thing I want to try is this protective metal coating. So I'm going to burn the metal first over here, and then we'll try the coating. Right about there. And we've got a hole burn through there. All right, now I'm gonna try the fire shield section. Oh. All right, guys, I'm gonna kind of talk over the camera here because this is boring as hell sitting here just watching me burn a piece of something. Essentially, what we gotta remember here is this is an oxyhydrogen torch. 
which is inflicting far more brutality on the surface than even an oxyacetylene torch could induce. It's something about the hydrogen flame that just gets higher temperatures than uh, oxyacetylene. I don't know what it is. It's a physics, uh, like atomic thing apparently. I'm not sure what they, the truth is because there's so much false information online about oxyhydrogen gas that you can't believe any of it. So, nonetheless, this material would typically never experience this type of brutality. We're taking it to the ultimate extreme for the purpose of seeing whether or not I want to bottle some of this up and try and sell it. I don't mind showing you guys how to make it either, but I've been selling a lot of stuff on eBay these days, and um, maybe it'd be easier for someone to just have a jar of something that can do what we're looking at here. There's no hole. Another piece of it. And I can tell you this, the reason why I would consider selling this stuff is because I know for a fact I'm going to be using it. You guys see the type of stuff I got going on around here and I often destroy my foundry and occasionally have to refurbish the top end of it. So I'm curious to see the performance of this stuff in an actual application. We will be getting a look right at that. On, man. So makes, uh, there's more to come really on the testing of this shield. material. And I also wanted to ask some of you guys some advice on how we might spruce this concoction up a little bit. A lot of physicists and chemists watch this channel, and you guys have some extraordinary input. So anything you guys have to contribute to the recipe that we have here, I would definitely be interested. Um, like I said, I am going to show you guys how to make the final recipe. I'm not going to hide it, but I am going to probably bottle some of this up and try and sell it for refractory patch material and maybe to act like um, the HT100 acts. HT100 is a refractory paint that enables you to get an extra 200 degrees out of your man, foundry man. simply by the way it reflects the IR infrared off of itself. It glows hotter than fire brick. We were almost there. So this ain't the type of glue you're going to put an airplane wing back on with it, but it, it seems to me it would be perfect for refractory purposes. Like, I've done crappier tuck point jobs than what this stuff can do inside of foundries and stuff and on brick walls even. It's definitely better than cement as, as far as an adhesive quality goes. It blows cement out of the water. Same thing with castable refractory. It's far more adhesive than that. We've seen how sticky it is. So I'm interested to take this stuff further in testing. Definitely uh, quite the heat shield. For sure. Let's see what this does. All right, so one of the things that's going on here, guys, we've all heard the term limelight, being in the limelight. What does that mean? Well, back in the days, they actually used to use brown gas wow. to heat up a piece of lime rapidly. because of its high it's melting point. The lime could withstand the torture of direct impingement of an oxyhydrogen flame, which is what brown gas is. So back in like the 1930s and all that, they actually made a lamp out of this stuff and it was used in the production of movies because of how bright it could get. And that's the only thing they had at the time. It was nothing better. So the fact that this lime is performing so good as a refractory makes total sense. If they use it in a limelight, they needed the best refractory known to man in order for the, a machine called a limelight to even work. It would be impossible to build a limelight without lime. We just burn a freaking hole in fire brick in seconds. Is where this limelight, it just, it acts like it can't be had. I feel like I would bore you guys out of the chair showing you how long it takes to damage a piece of lime with a hydrogen flame. Pretty incredible performance there. I'm going blind. I'm going to hit this again. So I didn't choose the lime 
based on the assumptions I've just described. It's simply because I had a bag of it sitting here in my shop. A good friend of mine, Bill, left a bag of it during some testing we did last year. And I had some water glass sitting there, and I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if I made some lime mix with it. And wow, did it take us down a road here. Um, we need to find a third ingredient to uh, make this stuff stiffer. Here's a drill bit that's encased in some of this material that's got a copper jacket. And I did this to exhibit the ability to create a high temperature dielectric separation between two conductors, which is something that comes up on occasion. You may find yourself wanting to pass electricity through a very hot wall. Not too shabby. That's a copper protective jacket. There it goes. Look through the copper. So, if you're still here, damn, are you serious about this? This can't be that interesting, right? I think it is, but I want to know if you guys think about this idea. Let me know in the comments. I want to jar some of this stuff up. Take a closer sell look it at these as a crucible paint. Down. So you can paint your crucibles. This stuff would be a fantastic this is, uh, crucible the, paint uh, to protect crucibles to extend the duration and love their lifespan. I also want to paint the inside of my foundry with yeah. this stuff because you've seen how when we did the rock burner oh, test, I vitrified the walls of my foundry and they pretty much melted like wax. I'm curious to see if I can protect the top of my furnace with this stuff as well. So maybe it's not something that lasts a hundred hundred uses or whatever, but we're going to put it to use. Uh, it's warming up outside. We're going to be getting the foundry out and I'm going to be painting some crucibles. I've already got some painted unfortunately with uh, some refractory concrete silt. I was going to do some testing with that, but it just powders right off of there. So I'm not so sure how that's going to work out. So I feel like an idiot. I really do uh, for doing this. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. This is what happens when you don't think, guys. I painted this damn thing with refractory concrete to save a little bit of silt that was left over, or slip. I think it's called slip. And uh, now the freaking thing's carcinogenic. You put this in a foundry, it's gonna blast this stuff right into your face, your lungs, and everything else. You shouldn't be standing around a waste oil foundry anyway, but I'm gonna scrape this crap off here with a wire brush. And we are going to paint some crucibles with this compound that I've created. And we're gonna test it as a crucible paint, first and foremost. And second, due to the performance that we've seen here, I'm gonna test it as a, f um, a foundry and uh, forge repair cement. It just performs so well. So, whatever's left on this video, guys, uh, it may be of interest to some of you in deep research, but for the common entertainment value, you might want to bail. Here's a piece of, uh, All right, so check it out. This is where I'm going to give everyone the winning lottery number of your state. My wife works for the company, so listen up. All right, I'm just kidding. Wouldn't that be cool if I had some down low information to provide to people that were still here? <laughs> anyway, what we got is some pretty amazing uh, material. It's not the best thing in the world, don't get me wrong. I don't know that I would build a foundry out of this stuff just yet. It's, it's right on the edge of being good enough, you know, it really is. You've seen how if it gets heated up really hot, which like oxyhydrogen hot, super red hot it does soften a bit but as far as a, a repair compound or a crucible paints concerned i am very excited about this stuff so if you've got some old crucibles that you want to spruce up and put back into work or put back into the crucible damn it i can't talk today i guess i should go to sleep 
Notre if you've got some great. crucibles that you want to put back into service, I think this is going to be the stuff Thank for you. you. And if you're still watching this video, you're probably the type of person that's um, got the wherewithal to make this stuff yourself. So it's going to be pretty easy for you. Here's the actual glue compound itself. And it is a absolutely robust refractory material. I've burned up a lot of stuff in my day. And uh, I've seen a lot of videos of homemade refractory vermiculite and all this stuff. And I remember being clueless in the field what it was like to not have a damn clue of which direction to turn when you go to make a foundry or something. Well, I've made quite a few in my day at this point, And Phenomenal I've got some pretty good input on what a guy would want to do as far as building a, a foundry. I can tell you that a lot of the recipes that I've seen on YouTube are a waste of damn time and they are deceiving you. You were watching some clown made a video where he ran, ran a forge or foundry for 20 minutes one time and then it crumbled to crap and then you never saw that part in the video but he promotes this mixture like this stuff is great. And I know this because I've saw videos of other people honest enough to share with us the reality of what took place when they followed the advice of some of these other recipes. So this amount of gas we're throwing into this little torch here. I hope you guys can hear me talking over myself. Here is the glue and I made this a long time ago. It's still somewhat pliable. So this stuff is a viable product right here. It's a nice little heat shield. I mean, I don't think it's gonna last forever, but it outdoes fire brick, doesn't it? Look at the holes. I don't know if the camera's picking up the depth at how deep these holes actually are. Look at that one. You could drive a car through that, and these here suffered no such Response, of course, they're not as porous, they're denser. And look at that, it didn't do anything. This thing just laughed at it. I couldn't damage this to save my life. Quartz is a beast, though, I'll give it to that. It's hard to melt quartz. I love how that didn't break. That's why this little apparatus right here survived its test. It had burning hot material in here, but um. I just most part wanted to point out this refractory. I can't really get into what that actually is, but there's a hit from that. These are just not what they're cracked up to be. I thought I had found a new exciting thing with these cores. They're just too weak. I thought they'd be stronger than what they are. They're, they're not usable. I was going to make a crucible out of them. <laughs> but this stuff I'll tell you what it seems to be stiffer than the fire brick now that it's been heated let's see what happens here with a drop so after the heating it busts on me but then again we've bounced it off the ground three or four times so that may have played a role It's certainly uh, not as stiff as a concrete, I wouldn't imagine. Just under a concrete in stiffness. Here's that refractory glue that we heated. It's looking really nice. It doesn't want to come off of there. So refractory on refractory, it's on there quite well. Yeah, it's not coming off. So this would make a great refractory glue. As far as metal goes, if the metal bends or warps, it will cause it to flake off. Like you see here, we've got this. The stuff ain't flexible. So here it flaked off the metal, but right here it did not. It's quite durable right there still. Nonetheless, we sustained a hole in stainless steel Whereas here, we were still shielded. Some damage was sustained. 
but nothing like what we've got here. This is ruined. This could be painted over again. Now, I did the same test on thicker metal for a good reason. I knew the warping and deflection would hamper the results. This is the damage inflicted here. It gets so bright, it gets hard to aim the torch. See, we got some underneath sugaring there. Um, the material is still on here quite well. It took quite a bit of force to pop that off of there. I think it'd probably last another run. It's not the stiffest thing in the world, but it's close. It could use a, maybe a little spiffing up. This is a piece of actual refractory concrete and it holds up quite well. It melts into a glass. This stuff here has a hard time melting at all. It just doesn't want to melt. We had to hit 4,000 degrees to do that. It's quite stiff right there. So it's not the sturdiest stuff in the world, but um, for like a paint on coating, I think it would be great for a paint on coating for a forge that's maybe sustained some abuse or damage, or maybe you got some cracks. It definitely see we can see how well this stuff seals refractory components and withstands heat to, on top of it there's that piece of copper we blasted through ah. melted that drill bit melted that drill bit i was considering using this for like a high temperature dielectric glue to like get a thermal couple probe or something into an area or some type of electrical wire. It's hard to get electrical wires isolated from each other in high temperature situations. So that's kind of what this project was all about. It seems to be very good for that. It makes a perfect high temperature glue. So this high temperature glue was made out of water glass and Yard and garden lime. And that gave us this stuff right here. You gotta mix it till it looks like this. So, that's what I got, fellas. Just thought I'd share that with you about the uh, refractories I've been messing with. I got some casting coming up and I had to make some of these cores for some metal casting I was gonna do. And that led to all this. If you're not familiar with casting cores, these are made out of sand. And these are the objects that you put in between the void spaces of a cast iron casting or aluminum or anything like that. And there's a lot of different ways you can make these cores. These are made out of sand and water glass. These ones here, I'm gonna explain what happened. But for the most part, see if I can flick it. No. For the most part, you can make a nice little core for casting out of water glass and silica sand. This particular one was made with a solution of water glass that uses 40% sodium hydroxide and 60% silica beads and 200 grams of water. I believe that might be 200 milliliters though. I have to check, it's been a while. But um, yeah, that's 200 milliliters of water. So I've got several different cores here we're gonna take a look at. Also wanted to share some information about these cores. If you ever go to make them, you might learn the hard way some things that I did about them. They can be cured with carbon dioxide, but if you reheat them after they've been set in air, they melt on you again. These here are the cores, and this is the composition that um, was used to make this one. This is a more of a refractory composition because it has, um, wait, is that the other way around? 
believe the higher the silica rate, the more refractory they're saying it is. I'll have to double check that. You can see this core here has a nice ring to it. Let me get something to ding it with. I need something that don't ding itself so much. This is a composition from Nerd Rage, uh, 60 grams of sodium silicate and 80 grams of sodium hydroxide with 400 milliliters of water. That's the solution right here. This is water glass and silica sand. And I think it's a 4% mixture, 4% by weight. We're gonna bust these things too. They don't sound the same at all. This is a composition B. See the composition of that one there. And this one here, I believe I got hot. And this is 8%. So they break pretty easy. Not a whole lot of structural there. That one seemed to be the stiffest. Absolutely. I'm going to burn some of these too, but nonetheless, if you make this composition and then get it hot again, it will melt on you unless it's been cured with CO2 or heat treated. That's what happened here on these. I decided to, to paint them with more water glass. I took this part and painted it, and that's kind of what happened. But nonetheless, this is a piece of the refractory glue, and I glued these two pieces of refractory that I made together with it. Wow, look at that. So the refractory glue, I've had this stuff in the jar for a long time. It's made out of garden lime and water glass. The stuff right here, which is made out of uh, sodium silicate, the desiccate beads, and sodium hydroxide drain cleaner.